If he asked me, where would I like to sell, either Vermont or on the Maine coast? Oh, I said, the Maine coast, just like that. You walked the rocks once, and, and, and you know, we noticed you yes. Yes. wondered. And then I saw, the first time I ever spoke to you was over at Riley's. That's what I remember. Yeah, yeah. It was at Riley's. Well, we knew you were, you yeah. were interested. Uh -huh. And I and I kind yeah. of, you know, told you that I knew, you know, yes, who I, I was and that knew a little yeah. bit about I the party. I remember and, yeah. seeing you at a laundromat oh, yes. on a on a rainy Sunday morning, <laughs> yeah. oh. and then the, you know we didn't speak. Of course, we didn't know each other. And then the right. next yeah. week, yeah. I saw you come to look at the cottage, and I said. Hmm. Philip, there are the people that we, you know, we <laughs> saw in Damascus. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that is funny. Some guy, I think, from Fairfield built your cottage and the one next to it that Lois owns now. And maybe the little one across the road. But I, th I think I've heard him say that, but I wouldn't want to, one record is saying it. My father helped him build it. Oh. Worked with him. Who did he work with to build it then? With Ben Smith, my father did. This cottage was in one family, really. Ben Smith sold it to Dr. Thurman, and then did Betty? Well, Did Betty have this after? Yes, she and, oh, and yeah. Worthington stayed here. That's no, no, right. Ben didn't sell it to Dr. Thayer. Ben would have sold it to George Strout. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's and Dr. Next Thayer door. was next door. Yeah. Now, yeah. who? Yeah. I assume Dr. Thayer built built the cottage next door. Next door. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, Lois might know that, that. but I, I've got to, to got to assume yeah. that that yeah. he, he was the first. She, she owned George Strout's your house, I guess. But uh, she came into money, her father died, that's right, he was a doctor, her father was a doctor. And so she built that place of uh, her Piper's, uh, Lois Piper. Uh, now. Was uh, that Thayer? Huh? Was that a Thayer? Thayer? Yeah, Dr. Thayer? That don't sound right. It might, it may, it may have been. Or Ben Smith? No. He was a doctor, though, I remember. And she came into quite a bit of money. Mm -hmm. And that's why she built that cottage so big. Right. When Nancy we was born in 58, and we bought the cottage when you were seven. We bought it yeah. in 64, we probably took it, yeah. we lived here and, in and 65, yeah. In 65. We did, because we bought it during the winter. Well, when you think, we bought this cottage for $12,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was considered a lot mm -hmm. in the yeah. area at that time. So high to believe. And yeah, yet it was amazing, not, yeah. I mean, yeah. having looked and looked and looked, mm -hmm. we knew well, that it was not good. out of proportion with everything else. That's what Manley said when he looked at this. He said, gee, it's really well built. And he too was saying what we did, the value was there. But gosh, that was a high <coughs> price for the area. Yeah. yeah. So. But I remember Manley telling me, uh, you know, down at the walk once we were just talking about property or something. Yeah, I don't know how we got. But he said, you know, I, I, uh, I could have bought certain parcels of land yeah. on the coast. And, yeah. and somebody coming to him and saying, you know, would you be interested in this piece of land? And, yeah. and, and Manley saying, 
Look, the the wood's all been cut off that lane. Yeah. What good is it? You know, <laughs> what, what good yeah. is it? And, uh, you know, there's no wood on there. There's yeah. nothing to, you know. Yeah. And, you know, he Plain says, I, I yeah. kicked myself. For, no. Oh, you could have bought bought it for almost yeah. nothing, you know. Because this place here costs quite a lot. Of, huh, how much do you think we paid for it? 55 acres, supposed to be. Don't forget, 46. The uh, economy of Maine was going downhill. Well, you, you'd never guess. $5,000. Of course, there was no electricity then, and the road was bad, and uh, no telephone, no nothing. He took us all different places. This place is for sale, maybe you'd like this place. This place is for sale, maybe you'd like this place. We said, no, we want to see the water. So we came down here and he said, well, he says, this is where it is. So Bob Foster owned it then. Yeah, the auctioneer. Yeah, he and his wife, they lived there one winter. So he, he'd bought it the year before for $1,000. Now, now, your place, I think, would have been built in the mid-twenties. Because, oh. see, see, Ben Smith yeah. w was, I think, the first one to come and settle from oh. the Fairfield area, oh, I didn't see, and then and then Doctor Walters was a friend of his, I and I think see. Ben came first and built built your cottage, oh. and and then uh, then probably other Fairfield people would come to visit with him or stop by, and they uh, you know they liked the the area, and would. Uh, See, because probably seven or eight of the places along here were, were, were you know, were owned by Fafia mm -hmm. people, the early cottages. I, I'm not really sure, but I think, see, Ben built, Ben Smith built, built this cottage. Mm -hmm. And then maybe Dr. Walters at, at some time must have, you know, started his cottage. Mm -hmm. And then I think Ben, I, I, I have to assume owned the land across the road too, mm -hmm. and built built the you know the cottage that we have, oh. and then at some nice. point after Marjorie and Doc were were married because it, the deed it, the cottage was in her name, but Doctor Walters must have bought it from Ben Smith. Oh, I never see it sometime, oh. and so Ben built this one, you know, built this one and built the one there. And then I think if you look around, you'll notice like the well your fireplace and the yeah. chimneys. Yeah. Ben was a was a jack of all trades, really. Yeah, we I think were he told could. That he did yeah. Build and those. and there are there are a number of them in this area that are very similar. Yeah. And I think Ben may have yeah. you know, been very active. Like and, the yeah. One up on on that hill. Up yeah, uh, beyond you there. Oh, oh yeah, it is a lot like that. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm yeah. not sure about the one next door. If he had, who built that? The first mm. person that I remember was a doctor Thayer that owned it. And I, but I have no idea now. Of course, Doctor Thayer then, Doctor Thayer's daughter married George Stout, Stout. Oh, who yeah. who owned who bought this from Ben Smith. Dr. Walters had built that, and he, he uh, adopted Phil Cameron. <coughs> when you used to come down, did you come for long stretches of time? Well, if they didn't have to take me home because I was homesick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I can remember, you know, it's odd to think that, that how much I love it now, but sure. as a little boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that. I don't know if I would have been four or four or five, and yeah. then I, my, <laughs> in a sense, my my grandmother's sister, who of course was was Mrs. Walters' mother. See, Mrs. Walters really was a would be a second cousin to me, oh. but because my mother and she were were so close that she was more like an aunt and mm, a second mother, you know, yeah. because yeah. she. They treated me like a, a son, mm -hmm. both the doctor and, oh. and uh, I. I had to be older, eight or nine, but I, I remember the uh, listening on the radio to the Joe Lewis, Max Smelling fight. <laughs> you know, it's funny how you remember 
certain <laughs> things, but it, it was, you know, the German against the American oh. and uh, and how how thrilled we were that Joe Lewis had had beaten Max Mellon. And, uh, but it's, it's funny, you know, things that you yeah. remember as a yes. kid. See, Dr. Walters had been, had been very ill at one time and had some kind of a, well, a rheumatic fever. Or he, he really uh, wasn't able, really wasn't able to, to walk or use his, his arms. And, mm. you know, he had practiced medicine right up to that point. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and he had to be, in, in his, in his seven, I think he was 70, Five when he died. See, I never, never knew Doctor Thayer, so that had no. to, he had to have died before uh -huh. 40, hmm. forty-five. Yeah. Really. Oh, this is Doc. This I wanted to see. Now, oh. th this is where I see the difference between Doc would go out in his pajamas, it, see, uh, where, where, where Doctor Thayer was in his suit yeah. and tie, where Doc would walk around in his pajamas. Well, I, I think Doc was quite a ladies' man. Yeah, you know, I think he was. That, that's yeah. Doc right there? Yeah, yeah this is this Doc. This is Doc? Yeah. Oh, yeah. see, this yeah, 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 yeah. He's, if anyone has been, it's this. He was a tall, a, a tall, you know, rugged, strong, I say rugged man. That's in front of the the Edison's, cottage next yeah, door. Yeah. Oh, without the top. Without yeah. the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, see there. <laughs> I never knew that was added I, on. No, it never, yeah, it doesn't see. look as if it, you no, can't well, imagine it no. without. Isn't that Isn't something? Yeah. And who, who were all these? See, people? these were all friends. There's, yeah. there's Dr. McCoy. Yeah. Well, I suppose it's some. Wait, this and is then. Our house. No, we is that yours? Yeah, yeah, that's that ours. No, the names are there. Yeah, that's you know, ours. See, the oh, names are there. Yeah. 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 And you they took the picture. That's our yeah, house. That's your house yeah. behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the then, porch uh, is there, certainly. I think this that? man yeah. was, a, was a plumber, had a plumbing business. Oh. And this woman was a nurse who, who ran, ran a hospital. Really? And, uh, she, you know, back with the, the Elm City Hospital. Yeah, get, getting, I, you know, I can't remember when, see, the Smith, no, when Ben would have died, although all. I'm sure probably Ben would have died in the, in the early 40s. I think they had some good times down here. They used to have parties. And, and then I remember somewhere them telling about, about Reuben playing cards with Reuben. See, I, I don't know. We never played cards down, you know, down there. Well, even he, though he's been gone for over two years, I said this, some of people have said to me, it just doesn't seem right not to see Reuben's truck going by. And they do. Some people on the point will say, gee, it just doesn't seem right not to see that truck going by. So he was an awfully good husband. That church was overflowing for his memorial service in pouring rain. Mm. And as I said, the letters and cards and everything that I got. I don't think Reuben had an enemy. I really don't. Everybody loved him. They did. Oh. So as I said, I was never Ida. I was always Reuben's wife. I'd meet someone and they'd say, oh yes, you're Reuben's wife. <laughs> oh. oh, and in fact, then after Dewey had the shop down to the point, I was always Dewey's mother because I used to work in the shop some. So I said, it's really on the last year or two that I've established my own identity. I'm now Ida Chase, <laughs> so, but. I met Rubin at a public dance, and we dated off and on, I guess, for about three years before we finally got married. And we lived at New Harbor in the honeymoon house for a year and a half. What's the honeymoon house? The house right across from Paul Hanna's, the little white cape that's for sale now. No. Everybody that got married lived there. and. The rent was $10 a month. That's why we lived there. <laughs> and then when, I guess Dewey was about 10 and months now, old. Now, when did you get married? In 1940, during the war. Mm -hmm. And 
we, I think it was October of, see, Dewey was born in 41, must have been October of 42 that we bought the house here. We were married in November, and this was taken the next summer. Because, <coughs> excuse me, my sister was dating a guy that was studying photography. And not the guy she married either. So he took several pictures and he enlarged this one for us. When we were married, he was fishing with Cody Brackett, which was a Sena. And then he went to work at the Ironworks, Bath Ironworks. And he worked over there during the, the war. And he developed pneumonia. He was a pipe coverer. And it was the asbestos. So they told him he had to give up working over there, which he did. And then he had a boat built and went lobstering for a few years. Down and, there? Uh, here. In, you know, he kept the boat down the cove. Because I said at that time, whoever thought we'd see the pleasure boats in the cove that we see now. Uh, there was two or three lobster boats in the cove, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And then when Will Carter, or I guess before Will Carter died, he helped him on cottages. And then after Will Carter died, he took over caretaker for all the cottages, and you know. In fact, he built the cottage that the Hughes owns now at the head of the cove, which is a year-round house. Mm. And he built uh, Betty Cody's, because he built it for Burton Owl. Mm -hmm. And he built four or five houses and cottages, but for the most part, it was repairs mm -hmm. and maintenance that he did. When I moved here, George and Ethel Stout owned the, the cottage. And then after Ethel died, because George married Mrs. Baxter, remember? Who was Gladys. Gladys, right, Gladys Baxter. Mrs. Stout was a concert pianist. She was. Which she was. Huh. And she played, uh, she had this, you know, re do you remember the piano we oh, had here? Oh, sure. Well, I, yeah. Yes. That yeah. weighed about at least two tons. You know, it was a concert yeah. piano. It was. A I can't imagine how the cottage ever stood up with it, or how yeah. he ever got it in here. Yeah, yeah. But it was anyway, custom-made, uh, right? Yes, yeah, so maybe they made it in here. It was custom-made. It was custom-made, indeed, and made mm -hmm. for her. And ah. as I understand it, she was a, a very accomplished oh. uh, pianist, and... Uh, and used to give, uh, you know, hmm. uh, recitals and stuff like that. Yeah. So Betty was her daughter by right. some marriage, right. and then she Bet, they were from then Gladys married Wellesley, Stout. Uh, outside, you know, in outside of Boston. And, uh, hmm. Well, that must be where Doctor Thayer then was from. She had to be. She had to be Doctor Thayer's daughter, and I assume they only had one. Oh, one, yeah. one child. Yeah. Gladys was Dr. Thayer's daughter? Yes. Yeah, Gladys yes. Stout. See, 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 see uh, George Strout was next door. See, you got a, Gladys was okay. next door. Oh, and then yes. when, when George's wife died, <laughs> that's when, when uh, Gladys and George got, got together. Uh -huh. And I assume they were married, but I they had to be married. Well, they because, were because she yeah, was because Mrs. of that. Yeah, 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 yeah because yeah, of yeah. you know. I suppose that's a modern trend. That, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. That, uh, <laughs> you know, that maybe back in the old days they just didn't live together. Yeah. They, were, they were actually married. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but anyway, get back to Georgetown. Uh, he owned this and he was going to build two down there. He wanted to build a place right up on the high land there on the point. Well, he owned part of... He owned that whole lot. It was 50 acres or so. See, like this was now, 50. see, I never knew that. Yeah. Well, and he also 
Now, I don't know whether he owned the uh, cottage he was, uh, where you live now, or were living, uh, or whether he lived in the next one. I'm not sure which one he lived in, uh, but what happened is his wife wouldn't come down here. She said it was too remote. She was a woman who liked to sit around, play cards and things like that, gab. Uh, I had a little scrap with George Stout over the wall here. He started moving, he didn't even ask me. So, <laughs> but anyway, it, it got smoothed over. So one time I was going past George Stout, I had the other tractor in those days, and those days I worked. Uh, so I saw him down there, and I stopped and went down and talked to him. So uh, I told him at that time, uh, the, the reason we had a scrap, you know, George, I said, was because you didn't ask us. I said, if you'd asked us, we would have given you the whole lot. <laughs> but that was the whole thing. See, he was used to just doing things on his own and not even consulting anyone. Mm -hmm. But he was a nice chap. In fact, uh, Oh, I have a chair here, a wickerwork chair. He was an importer. And you've seen these uh, wickerwork chairs, uh, rattan work. He says, uh, we had it here on the porch. He says, you know, he says, I imported that. So that's where all that stuff came from. He imported stuff from China and uh, the near, what's that, the Near East? Far East. Yeah. He was a nice chap in his way. See, our whole house is full of all that furniture. Oh, is it? And that's where he got it from. See, I think that they built... Now, I don't know whose they built first, whether it was Piper's or ours. Oh, well, Piper's that. was uh, built way after. Yours was there first. Now, he, he, he used to come before he married Gladys because I remember once he came with another man who... I don't know, was some young guy, but rather strange that this man would be with him. He, he didn't seem like a friend. It was more somebody, wherever he lived, that just drove him down and was with him. Oh, and, nice. and I remember old George was going to bake lobster, the stuffed baked lobster. Now, there was something, and I, you know, I guess I wondered in my mind how George was going to do this. But yeah. Supposedly, that's that's mm -hmm. what he had. But uh, the next thing I remember was that after he married Gladys, I came over to talk with him once. He was sitting out on the on the uh, in in the yard somewhere. They must have chairs, and I sat with him and we talked. And it reached the point where he said to me, uh, "I'd like to do such and such. I'd like to go to get something." And I said, well, gee, I'd just soon drive you there, George. And the next thing I heard was, no, you won't. And it was Gladys from an upstairs, from an upstairs bedroom saying, no, you won't. And I, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what I'd done. And I kind of looked up. And I think it was, it was after that. She must have seen me somewhere or said yeah. to me. We don't want George going alone because he buys cigarettes. So he buy, oh. he was buying something that oh. she didn't want him to buy. So she she uh, so that that was the last time I offered to take George anywhere. <laughs> Gladys, I knew rule whatever. Rule You now I don't know if you have one of these. No, you have no, one of we these. Don't. I haven't. Yeah, that's your. This is your fifty-two. Is your lot. This and, and this at some time. See, I, I didn't realize until I, we'd had the cottage for a while and I must have checked a deed somewhere, but I always thought we owned, we owned all, this plot that yeah. went straight up and up and so on. See, I, I own 28 and 29. But I always thought this went exactly well, yeah, that way. I think you did. Tell me. But I, I think back in the old days, if if somebody needed two hundred and fifty dollars or something, they they sold them so, a well, piece yes. of land, and for some reason, Doc or Marjorie didn't 
Yeah. Didn't want that, or or maybe when they bought it, I have no. That must be another. <laughs> That's Ricky. Uh, a small I now, Ricky. Oh, you know, oh, has that yeah. now. <laughs> See, there's the. Oh, you're the best the, it, oh, Now there, that. there isn't. Oh. The, you know, I oh, look oh, for oh. a date, but there's no, no date, date on that. But here it says oh, yeah. Thayer, Baxter. Thayer and Baxter. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. See now, Ben Smith. And Doctor Ben <laughs> Smith. Yeah, yeah, look at right that. There, see. Look at and that. Doctor Walters and it's got, but and see the there weren't very many cottages on on no. the other side of the road. Uh, there was only yeah. o only the Doctor Walters cottage or Isn't ours. Isn't that something? Yeah. Bunch see of now. Tookies. <laughs> now the post office, the Cham Chamberlain post office. Oh, sure. yes. I can remember going to the home when when uh, when Arthur's mother was oh, the postmistress. Oh, his aunt. aunt. Yes. Oh, uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Well, I knew she was. I a, mean, not that a, we ever saw yeah. her, but right. they're telling. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He told I can him. remember, you know, <laughs> walking. And the man by the name of Henry Chamberlain helped get the post office, and they couldn't name it Long Cove, you know. On account of there was a long cove down east, so they named it for the man Henry Chamberlain. No kidding. Now where was he from? Bob Pond. Yeah. And she went contacting Mr. Chamberlain, and he said, "I'll try and help you, all I can." He contacted Washington, and they they came here, f and she was the first one. Died the post office in 1903, and she had it 48 years, and then she was 70 years old and had to retire those days. They had to retire at 70. They had to. Yes. So I thought I'd like to take it. I was working at the garage at the time, wasn't making much money, and the office didn't pay much money either. But I told the inspector that. If I could send the mail off in the morning, it went half past five in the morning, if I could send it off and Louise could take care of the incoming mail and I could still work in the garage for the winter, that I would like to have it. He says, I'll see what I can do. We went back to Portland and come back here and made off. He says, you can have that post office. And then I took it. And I was made postmaster in December. I took it in September. And I was made postmaster in December. And I had it exactly 20 years and I gave it up. You had got it in December of what year? 1953. And I no. gave it up in 73. I came up one day and I said to Louise, we'd had it 20 years then. I said, I think we ought to retire. It was hard to get things for the store. We had a long store along with the post office. And I said, Louise, I think we ought to retire. We paid our dues, I think. She, she said, you think you can make it? I said, I know we can. So I went to Portland and the guy up there to Portland, I went to get a retirement papers. He says, you don't want to retire? He says, money's coming in the hand over fist, he says. Now on. He says, just beginning to get good money you are. I says, I don't care if it, it is coming in the hand over fist. I want to retire right now. Okay, he said. So he gave me papers and I, I get the fellow over the bath post office and he helped me. We sent him in and I retired right off. Then they come up here and took over. We almost lost the post office though. They wanted to close it. They thought they could save money by closing the post office. We tried all kinds of ways and they still were going to close it. So I, I said to my patrons, I said, why don't you write into Washington to all our senators and congressmen and tell them be hardship. You all the people here, be hardship. You have to go to New Harbor three miles each way, some didn't have cars, they'd have to walk. 
So it wasn't long before I got a call from Washington and said that they were going to save the post office. And that's the story. He came to Augusta to work in, uh, what year was that, 1930? 1930. And he was born in the same place where I lived, then Augusta, I met. Let's see. And the old, there was an old maid had the house where, I, where we had rooms. He asked me, he asked me to go to a, uh, was it the movers? <laughs> and she said that I asked him. And did you? No, I didn't ask him. He asked me to go to the movers. Window of 1930 and 31. Mm -hmm. Right. So. We went together seven years. We could, I couldn't get work, steady work. I worked in the state house. I worked with a man where I was to learn to cook. Two winters. I worked for no money. My my meals and room, no money, two winters. And I came home and worked around here in the summer. And then um, after we'd been going together, let's see, five years. Seven, I thought. Five years. Five. I come down, started a home bakery. Oh, yeah, that was it. Oh. Pimple, down to Pimpercrete Beach on the corner is where you go to the fort. And uh, after two years, I had pretty good business going. We got married. But we had a hard time for a number of years right. after we got married. Depression was still on. We knew the value of a dollar, I'll tell you that. She only had one dress at that time. To then no good dress. <laughs> One good dress to go anywhere. And I guess probably I didn't have any more better pants. We had plenty to eat, though. But as, as the time went on, when I, after I took the post office in, got post office worked up, we got along all right. Paul's father, Clifton Hannah, had the garage when I used to work there. I worked in Mary Brackett, he and I worked together, mechanic work. And I worked there eight years and a half, and then I told him when I was going to take the post office, I said, I said you can get somebody to, to work here right off if you want to, because I, I've taken the post office up Chamberlain. And I said, I can work till May. Well, he says, we keep it on where we are now. And every once in a while I'd say, somebody, you had anybody in mind? No, he says, no. And when I got through, he didn't have anybody in mind. But after I did, got through about a month, I guess, Howard Cushion went to work for him. And he worked a short while, and then I think it, uh, Carl, Prentice, Carl Prentice worked there with, along with Merritt. Merritt used to work a lot on the boats at the shore, which left somebody in the garage alone all the time. But after I retired from the garage there to go to work in the post office in May, and Halloween night, Cliff was feeding the kids ice cream and then got through, went home, dropped pretty dead. So then Paul took over, Cliff's son. That was Cliff Hanna? Yeah. And how old was Paul then? Well, he just got back from service a short time. I guess probably he was 28, somewhere along there. Then they had the big surf casino down in back of that building, three-story building. They used to have pool, bowling, silent movies, dances. 
Oh, it was a great place then. Seth Casino was called. And what building was that in? They tore it down now. It used to be the Seth Casino. Ba down back where the well, post office shop used to be there. When I was a young boy, the minister down there, New Harbor, Reverend Herrick, he used to take us in that bowl and play pool. And some of the Methodists down there, they, they didn't want him to play pool. They stopped him. Boy, we were some mad. <laughs> and they stopped him from playing pool with us. He used to take us in there and play pool and he'd pay for it and everything. Us young fellows. I belonged to both the Red Men Pocahontas. I blunt that 62 years. I'm a life member. I can go to any tribe in the United States, which there are tribes all, all over the United States, and be accepted. I don't have to pay any dues anymore. When I was a 50 year member, one night the great, great sachem came. The great who? Uh, the great sachem of Maine. And he came, he's the head of the whole tribe of Maine. And he says, I was keeper of records, kept the books, the money. And he said, I want you to report to the council plan. That's in the floor where the fire comes from. Then. So I, I said, what have I done now? <laughs> and I got out there at the council man, he says, I'll tell you what you've done. You've been a 50-year member of the Red Men. It's 52 now, be exact, he says. So I got a pin for you, 50-year pin. And he says, from now on, he said, you won't have to pay any more dues. And you go to any large United States free. The tribes all over the United States. It dates back to the Boston Tea Party. And it is an Indian outfit. They wear Indian costumes, Indian war dances. Oh, no, 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 no. I've heard that before, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and one, one year we went up to Portland to, to, to practice a degree team, a degree on a couple of men. And at the end of the degree, the great sage of Maine was there and he says, you've got the best degree team in Maine. One loan for we got twenty dollars for having the best degree to him man. Great. Yeah. But now is the Pocahontas what what um what you belong to? Yeah, I belong to Pocahontas. We right? both do. Yeah, a bunch of us. So women can men can belong to the Pocahontas? If they're red men. But you can't belong to the Red Men. No, no, no. That's just a man, a men's tribe. No more than the Eastern Tar could belong to the Masons. Mm -hmm. But a Mason, if he's a Mason, a man, if he's a Mason, he can belong to the Eastern Star. Um, but now you have, you have, well, I remember once we were up here in the great Pocahontas, had come uh -huh. or something, yeah. right? right? Now, mm -hmm. who who is that? Well, different ones, you know. They uh, work up. From, they work up to. Work up to the great Pocahontas. Uh, now, she was the great Pocahontas of Maine of all tribes. The Pocahontas tribes of Maine. And she came one time when you were both here? Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, and does she dress up and stuff or what? No. She wouldn't dress up in any costume. You only dress up in no costume when you have degrees oh. or some. I wish I thought I'd get that 
headgear out. Yeah, right. Oh, you have the headgear? I got a headgear, Indian headgear. Huh. It's wonderful. The degrees are they're beautiful. When your aunt took started the post office in 1904, how many people lived in Chamberlain? Well, there were some cottages here, but there weren't so many as of course as there are now. But each year they kept building cottages down there and built it up. I think maybe uh, Ben Smith built oh, Riley's Riley. cottage. There was nothing between low uh, between this cottage and the Riley cottage. The Tukiers owned the whole Alonco Point. It was a cheap pasture. You were getting that down there? Yeah, yeah, I never it's knew It's a cheap that. pasture. And uh, finally they sold it in lots. Most of all those lots was sold for $25. How many lots were they? Oh, I can't tell you just how many all those cottages. They divided on guide lots. That whole point they sold for $25? And each lot. When was that? Well, uh, it dates back to the first cottage was built. I can't tell you when that was, probably 1900. But see now, this was goes back to the to the to the old road. There's no road along the shore. You're right. You're see, right. There the old, it is. Yes, there's absolutely. the old road that yeah. goes. Yeah. Up over the Hastings hill. Hastings Pond. Mm-hmm. There's a round pond. Now this. See, and the road went way but, in yeah. here. Mm-hmm. And up, 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 up for heaven. See, I don't know, Dick, if. If 32, see, now comes down in this. Well, yeah. Like where well, the, I bet you this know. probably is the dump road yeah. across here. Well, look, see, there was a road coming down to the shore. Unless yeah. that's coming but out that's of back, New Harbor. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, that, that's that, that cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're right. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. It missed How the shore that, completely. Sure. I know that they had just a dirt road up through there for years when those cottages, I've heard him say, was built. All the way up to New Harbor? Yes. You know, because the road went down, I don't know how far, the Twin Cottages, I think it was. And then came up probably along Gosnell Limes or somewhere along there. And then, uh, one by one, cottages were built mm -hmm. along the road there. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, they put the road through. Because the old road went down by Reuben's mother's, the house that I was telling you about, and came out down where the workmen's live, isn't it? Right, it comes out right there. It was, because a few years ago, well, quite a few years ago, time goes so fast, they wanted to open up that road and make that the direct route. In other words, make that 32, okay. and uh, which would be, have been a state road. But it would have thrown all those cottages along the shore. And I was against it. Because I said people love to ride along and look all over the water. And I said it was not going to cut down on traffic. Because people would still use the shore road and it would not be maintained the way it's maintained now. Mm -hmm. If anyone was in a hurry, yes, if I was going to New Harbor to buy something, mm -hmm. if that 32, I would have probably have taken it. Right. But otherwise than that, I love to look off at the water. Well, oh, wait a minute, road. that's Hayfield right, the Hayfield, road. Hayfield, Hayfield road. road, that's right, Look now at that's that. right, now I don't know, there's one further back there too, but that's right, that's where the, that's where the, the road, well, we, for Pete's sake. That, that comes out, this must be 32 runs, comes out in here somewhere, mm -hmm. steamboat right. route, right, see? right, yeah. right, <laughs> yeah, all on the ledges, hmm. yeah. Brown's head, Brown's cold. Oh, see, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Morris Harbor. <laughs> see. Yeah. Ah, so yeah. that's. Yeah. Look at that's pretty look old. Look at Morris. Look at Morris Island, and this is called Thrumcap Island. That's yeah. a little island off Morris. 
Isn't that funny? Huh? What's it called? Thrum Cap. T H R U M C A P Island. Yeah. The little island. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, when yeah, the tide yeah. goes out, yeah, you can yeah, walk yeah. across. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Ross Island. Dry ledges. Poland ledges. Killick Stone. Western Egg Rock and Eastern Egg Rock. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Allen Island. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that something? <laughs> I get, when I look out, I can't keep them straight. Yeah, you know, yeah, just, yeah. It's hard to. to we kind of yeah. got to have some sense of where they were when we'd go out on the boat. Yeah, well, I yeah. think you, you, you have to yeah. do that. Yeah. You can't and just look out. And, uh, the, and, yeah, it makes yeah. a big difference yeah. if you're right yeah. out on the water. Yeah. You get a sense yeah. of where you're it right. is. Well, yeah. now, where is uh, where's that lighthouse we used to go to? Yeah. Franklin. Is that right? Franklin, Franklin Island. Franklin. Well, I don't see that. Because you see, you know. It should be right. Right around here. Right there, Franklin Light. Oh, okay, good. That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Straight out from Haddock. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now, Weber's Dry Ledge, is that where the seal? Yes. That's where they go uh, for the seal. Yes. Now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we professor. were explaining how we happened to come here, oh, and yeah. Dick explained that oh. he worked at that time with Paul Sweeney, who oh. grew up here summers, yeah. who lived yeah. in Boston, whose sister still had a cottage here, mm -hmm. and when we came, and the name is Chapman, the name is and Chapman. when we first came up, ah. she did have a cottage up that road, yeah. Yeah. they've ah. since moved further down east. So I said I wish Ruben was here, because he could tell you more stories, and I think the sad, kind of sad, to see now the, you know, the the local, the natives yeah. who lived yeah. in in the harbor all yeah. live outside now. That's true. And uh, yeah. you know, it's not that there's, I suppose, anything wrong because they're they're getting a hundred times more than they paid, and yet yeah, yeah, you yeah, you hate yeah. to see yeah. times change to the well, point where the where just summer people come in and, yeah. and yeah. take over what, you know, the, the this yeah. property yeah. That, the, yeah. that the lobstermen had. I said it won't seem right, but that's the way we feel about a lot of the cottages and you have to accept change. I wouldn't want to go back to the old days myself. Night winds, the dune grass, the fires we keep glowing. It's time to be going, but I feel like I'm 